I know that most of you volunteered. Originally, this started as a CID operation, and then we actually got some volunteers from FSD and even extra people from CID volunteered, so thanks for that. Welcome. Today, we're targeting the, the seven bar loop area, all right? So try to keep it north of Paseo. We'll stay on the west side. There's really nothing on the east side of the river that we're interested in today, so uh, team leaders, you guys know where to go, okay? Um, what we've seen, for those of you who don't work these very often, what we've seen is that a lot of the uh, lower level offenders and even prolific offenders will commit their thefts and then they get it on the buses at the Northwest Transit Center or they use the Bosque to get out of the area. And that's to really avoid uh, identification or apprehension by the local teams, which over here, it's most of the time it's APD. We're, we're just a little bit further south, but those guys will usually be on foot and they'll have the items in their hand. Sometimes you'll see them with big beach bags full of stuff. Um, th those are some of the precursors of what we'll see. Your team leaders are going to direct you on how we do the operations at the stores. So you do what you do. Our air will be CID and an alternative because there's two teams with four subsets. So stay on one of the two airs and if you have any interest, uh, important information, go to North Air and get your ambulances, case numbers, things that, that we need as far as regular dispatch stuff. All right? Some of the things that I need from everybody at the conclusion is going to be, it's in the tack pan on the last, pla last page. That's for the debrief. That's important not only for our interagency cooperation, but it's important for us to track who the prolific offenders are and what businesses are getting hit the hardest. All right, that stuff's really important. I'm gonna have a running log. So if you can send me a text, send me a picture of their face, send me, um, of course, all the information that's in the, in, the, in the TAC plan in the back section in the conclusion, okay? I'll need that. If you have any issues, uh, there's two supervisors working today, me and Sergeant Paul Montoya. You don't have our 21s, get with your team leaders. All right, some of the updated information that we have recently, obviously, is there's, there's a couple of targets that we're working actively on the west side. They're stealing things like Yeti coolers, Yeti cups, big bags, tents, the things that they need to be out and be unhoused. So those may be some precursors too if you see uh, certain things happening after we've identified a target inside a store. Make sure that you get everything that you need while you're here today. So if you happen to get drawn into a use of force, get your FI stuff done today, don't wait. Because there's only two of us and there's 24 people here that are gonna be running actively. These are the patterns that you'll see, okay? Up front, if you make an arrest, it's gonna go dry until the evening when it gets cooled off. If you don't make an arrest in the first hour, I would suggest rounding your team up and hit the streets. We have social workers that are coming just after they finish their uh, class, they're teaching a class right now. After they finish, they'll be here to help. If you see somebody in needs, we'll get you a resource book or, or whatever we can do to help that person on the street anyway. And uh, we'll have not only social workers, but people from crisis intervention as well to assist. That's a secondary mission really to what we're trying to attack, which is the organized retail crime, prolific offenders, and maybe even trying to deter some, some other types of crime away by the presence and all these wonderful faces. So just know that that stuff is available. If you have any uh, outside agency case needs, like uh, referrals for guns, maybe an offender that you think ha is involved in other cases, let me know and I'll coordinate with that supervision of another agency. I'll also put that in the notes. That's a good thing to know. Does anybody have any questions? No? There, if anybody's a 49er fan, there's a cooler full of prime energy drinks and waters right there. Hello, afternoon. My name is Holly Anderson. I'm the major with the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. Thank you guys for coming this afternoon and for supporting us and our operation. So like you heard Sergeant Hicks say, we're looking at combating the issue with organized retail crime. But in that initiative, 
we're also going to be assisting the needs of the public that are here. When we come into contact with individuals, depending on the situation, we'll see if they need resources. We will have those resources out here with us today, as that is social workers and our crisis intervention unit. Um, do you have any questions? Does that mean you will not be making arrests? We will be. So we're here to do two things. Our mission is to enforce the law and to also provide services. We want to make sure that those who are willing to accept services and ask for them or they accept them when we're offered that they're able to take us up on that. Why the seven bar loop area? Uh, we've received you know information from all over the city and the county and we're just trying to address this particular area right now. Uh, we've done different operations throughout the city. We've been in the Central Corridor and the Northeast area around Coronado Mall and Uptown. So we're focusing right now on this area from outreach from the community and the retail servicers. We've got a notable amount of manpower out here. Like how many arrests are you anticipating for that? It really depends on the situation. So we don't really know what to anticipate what we're going to come across. Uh, we have some specific targets that Sergeant Hicks and his team have identified. If we come across them, we'll be handling those accordingly, but it's hard to say how many we're anticipating getting. Can you describe some of what the kind of retail crime that has gone on in this area that has caused you to want to come out here, like specific cases or any anecdotal stories? So originally last year when we started the mission, we they were just taking basically merchandise and or like categories of merchandise, health and beauty, uh, traditional merchandise like clothing and and toiletries and stuff like that. Um, and, and eventually what we found out was that they were using the Northwest Transit Center to escape the area. That's one of the reasons that we're out here. Um, some of the trends that have come up recently is they're, they're stealing the things that they need to stay where they are. Uh, there's some unhoused persons, there's some persons who maybe stay with friends and family and stuff, so they're stealing what they need. Same old things, health and beauty, merchandise, and even maybe some cell phones too every now and then. So. Originally, it was a merchandise issue, and now we're starting to get into uh, the further further targets into those investigations, which would be the fencing locations, the fencing persons, and even some of, obviously, we're going to naturally get into other investigations like narcotic investigations and so forth. You said when you started the operation, when was that? What time period are you talking about? Um, May of 2022 is when we started this whole mission and it originated in our jurisdiction on the west side, which is the area of Coors and Irving. It's kind of an outskirt, but it's still part of our, our assignments. So initially, just in passing, we contacted uh, some of the management of the Target business, and we made countless take, uh, arrests at that location for, really, it was only uh, organized retail crime before it was named that. And we were just doing regular old cop work in the middle of calls, we were working these types of cases, and it was fun. It, it, it developed into an investigation group, and here we are. Why is it important to work with businesses and citizens to combat retail crime? Well, there are eyes and ears, right? We only know what they report to us. So we're trying to be proactive. That's why we're out here now, because we have heard the information that they've been reporting, that they are having these specific issues. And it has gotten quite organized, as Sergeant Hicks has said. So we're out here trying to be proactive about the approach. How many times have you guys met with businesses and, and all that? Can you explain the, the process? It seems like you guys are proactive. Yeah, Sergeant Hicks, I believe, meets with them on a, a monthly basis. And then we have had a couple of uh, roundtables with our community leaders. We've had two thus far. We anticipate having more this year, but we're in constant contact with our community. When we go out and we're just, you know, any complaint that we hear from our business owners, it's reported back to the sheriff, and this is a development from those issues. What are the goals for today? Well, to assist our local community here, retail specifically. So we're here to specifically identify prolific offenders within the retail theft community and to also help those of us who you know, want to visit all these stores feel safer while we're here. So we also want to get them help. If they're here to still basic needs, and that's what they're taking, we have some of our social workers that are going to be available and our crisis intervention unit that can help and identify some of those basic needs for them. Is this something that uh, Cottonwood Management asked for uh, specifically, or is this something you just took the initiative to 